In the Halo universe, the Spartan super soldiers are equipped with a high-tech armor called Mjolnir. The suit weighs around a thousand pounds and costs as much as a UNSC destroyer. It also enhances the natural abilities of the Spartans by making them stronger, faster, more agile and tougher to kill. Even if the armor weighs half a ton, Master Chief has a top speed similar to a cheetah. Let's analyze the armor and see how it could be replicated in the real world. First, we're going to look at the armor layers. The helmet is made of the same titanium composite as the rest of the armor plating. To allow the Spartan to see, the helmet has a visor made of multi-laminated sapphire glass. Sapphire glass is slightly less hard than diamonds and is a good material choice to make a bulletproof visor. If it were laminated with a transparent nanomaterial like graphene, the visor would be even stronger and have electrical properties desirable for the interior heads-up display. The exterior is coated with polarized reflective gold. This is the same coating used on astronauts' helmets. It helps reduce glare, reflect heat and radiation, as well as act as a one-way mirror. The heads-up display built into the visor has a link to sensors in the gloves that can detect the type of weapon being held, display the amount of ammunition, and the targeting crosshair with a zoom function. It also displays shield strength, waypoints, a health monitor, equipment, close-range sensors, and other data. The helmet also has various pieces of equipment that helps increase the Spartan's situational awareness and communication. There are sensors, microphones, speakers, and a camera for communications and battlefield recording. It also has an air filtration system that removes all particles, toxins, and biological hazards. The air is pumped into the helmet and has to pass through filters. When the helmet is in a vacuum or underwater, the air pumps are sealed and the rebreather allows for a limited air supply. If the CO2 were to be converted back to O2, the Spartan could have an air supply for as long as the fusion reactor could provide the energy. We also have a neural interface inside the Spartan skull that translates electrochemical signals into digital code and has an interface connection behind the helmet. This can allow the Spartan to control the armor movements. This interface is so fast that it can make the suit move before the Spartan's arm can move since the conductive speed of superconductors are faster than those of neurons. The outer shell plating is a multi-layer monocrystalline titanium alloy. A monocrystalline structure doesn't have any structural weaknesses which makes the material stronger. Titanium was chosen for its high strength and low conductivity for a metal. Titanium will also give minimal protection against radiation when in outer space. There are non-metal materials that are much stronger than titanium but are not well suited for the outer shell. Then, the plating has a refractive heat resistant coating that helps disperse energy attacks from coveted weapons, giving the titanium a larger surface area to absorb the heat. The plates are designed to collide and stop at a certain range of motion to prevent overextension of the joints. Some of these plates are a single giant plate, like the chest piece, and some are a group of small plates locked together, like the forearm plates. Otherwise, the armor would be impossible to put on. The hard plates are bolted onto the nanocomposite bodysuit, which possesses an integrated exoskeleton. If there was no exoskeleton, the plates would move since they would be on top of a flexible structure. The exoskeleton also prevents the Spartan from feeling the weight of the armor since it goes from the helmet down into the boots. The next layer is the thick titanium nanocomposite bodysuit with the integrated exoskeleton. This layer is meant to be flexible and bulletproof. In this case, since titanium isn't very flexible, the bodysuit could be made of another material like Kevlar, Dyneema, or carbon nanotubes. It also has the same coating to resist Covenant energy weapons. The bodysuit has small boats protruding to attach the outer shell plates directly into the exoskeleton. Since the suit is mostly made of titanium, it acts as a Faraday cage and protects the electronic components of the suit against TMPs. Under the bodysuit, there is a gel layer that regulates temperature inside the suit and can change its density depending on the g-forces the wearer is exposed to. The gel can also become rigid, which protects the joints from high impacts. Since the suit protects against outside temperature, it only needs to cool down the Spartan since his body heat will keep him warm in cold weather. If the Spartan gets too hot, thermoelectric cooling could take the body heat away and in turn, it would cool down the Spartan's body temperature. The gel has to be a shear thickening fluid with magnetic particles inside 
to become rigid on impacts or on command. Although if it pressurizes too much, it can create a nitrogen embolism. This is when air from the lungs escapes into the blood and creates air bubbles. This is quite dangerous and it can lead to heart attacks. The inner skin suit is a moisture absorbing cloth material linked to temperature sensors to regulate body temperature with the gel layer. This material must be antibacterial and absorb the sweat and oil produced by the Spartans since they don't remove the armor for long periods of time. A simple material like bamboo could achieve this function. Finally, the suit has a layer of artificial muscle to further enhance the Spartans' capabilities. This layer is made of a piezoelectric material called lithium nibicine. This material can deform mechanically when exposed to an electric field. Since lithium nibicine is a liquid crystal, it flows like a liquid, but under an electric field, it forms a crystalline structure and acts like a solid. The electric field generates contraction in the desired direction by reorienting the crystal structure. To create the artificial musculature, the liquid is poured into a microcapillary system. The system can take the neural input from the Spartan and send the relevant electric signals to the capillaries that can generate a specific movement. Personally, I think that the bodysuit and the artificial muscle layer could be one and the same. If carbon nanotubes or some sort of futuristic nanomaterial was used, the suit would weigh less, have more protection, and be more powerful. Now, let's look at the equipment of the Mjolnir armor. The suit possesses magnetic strips, which allows the armor to hold the Spartan's weapons. These strips are also used in the boots to cling to metal. The same technology could be used to climb walls if it was integrated into the gloves. This would only work on metal surfaces, since non-metal surfaces would need to use the van der Waals force, and it isn't strong enough to hold a suit weighing half a ton with only the surface area of hands and feet. The Mjolnir armor has an integrated shield since the Mark V. The technology was reverse engineered from Covenant shielding. I can't find any information on how this technology is supposed to work. If I had to guess, I would say that it's a derivative of the holographic or hard light technology. Since holograms exist and we see hard light bridges, it could be that their shields use similar technology. In real life, hard light does exist, but we know very little about its properties and whether or not it could act as a shield. The suit has a pressure seal since it can go into space and underwater. We already know it can generate its own air supply, but the bodysuit and gel layer are responsible for maintaining a comfortable pressure inside the armor. When the armor fails and the Spartan becomes injured, the biofoam injectors are used in these emergency situations. The biofoam is a polymer that expands and seals the wound with a medical gel that will coagulate to immediately stop the bleeding, but it doesn't heal the wound. The biofoam has an anesthetic effect to reduce pain and antibacterial properties, but if the biofoam was made of the stem cells of the Spartan along with medical ointments, it could allow for fast healing on the battlefield. All this technology inside the armor needs a power source that can create a lot of energy. In older models, the Mjolnir armor would use a nuclear fission reactor. This creates inconvenient radiation, therefore it was replaced for a nuclear fission reactor. This microfusion reactor is the size of a battery pack and is located on the back of the armor. It fuses two deuterium atoms and can create two types of reactions, a helium-3 atom and the energy in the form of a neutron, or a tritium atom and energy in the form of a proton. In the case of the second reaction, it could also use the tritium product and fuse it again with a deuterium atom to create helium-4 with a very high energy neutron. The micro-reactor most likely uses miniaturized lasers and strong electromagnetic fields to generate the fusion. The reactor can power the suit for 15 years without problems. For this to be possible, the fusion reactor needs to extract deuterium from water particles in the air and store it for future use. Behind the helmet, where the neural interface is located, there's a small computer port for AI chips. This allows the connection between Master Chief and Cortana. The chip is most likely a quantum supercomputer with a massive memory capacity. The memory storage could be based off the DNA double helix. Theoretically, this method could allow for 215 petabytes of information in a single gram of DNA. 
It can also improve strength by a factor of 2 and increase reaction time by a factor of 5. This is most likely the work of the AI by increasing muscle fiber recruitment from 50% to 100% and to transmit neural signals to the artificial muscles by the suit's circuits. All this information is conducted at near light speed, making the reaction time of the Spartan far faster. As mentioned, the AI port can analyze and store a lot of information. But to what purpose? Cortana has multiple tasks other than keeping Master Chief company. She can infiltrate any system, including alien computers, which might operate on completely different and advanced methods of computing to either retrieve data or intel. She also does all the mathematical calculations required to effectively operate the suit and acts as a general assistant to Master Chief. The final piece of equipment in the suit is the filtration system. The Spartans can only remove the suit with the help of machines, but the suit still requires a way to dispose of waste. The inner skin suit has a urine purification system that can become drinking water when the Spartan doesn't have a water supply. Even though the Spartan can go weeks without eating, the suit has a recycling system that can feed the necessary nutrients to the Spartan. So, overall, the Mjolnir armor is quite realistic, although the shields, fusion reactor, artificial muscle layer, and the AI are the parts of the armor that we are running behind technologically. We could do without the AI and the shields, but the armor would need another power source. Fuel cells could fit in the armor and power the suit for a certain amount of time. The only problem is, how much fuel can it contain? Thank you for watching this video, and make sure to leave any ideas or thoughts about this video in the comments below. I've just reached about 200 subscribers, which, if I look a month back, I didn't have any. And it's all because of your support, on the mainly on the Crisis Nanosuit video. So I thought I would do this video, which is quite similar. So let me know what you think. Yeah, just thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for the support.